OK, we are. I will call this special council meeting on June 21st, 2023 at 740 p.m. We'll now call the special council meeting to order. Um, recommendation is that the agenda be approved as presented unless someone has additional items to add. Seeing none, could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Thompson, Councillor Coburn, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you. If there's any declaration of pecuniary interest, you can declare it at any time throughout the meeting. Item four, CAO priorities and job descriptions. So there's attached resources for CAO recruitment for information only. We'll go to 4.1 CAO pri priorities. So let's start with comments and discussion. Crystal, did you want to start this? Thank you. Yes, please. So what I thought for our first meeting, um, we would go around and we would have each member discuss what you have thought your priorities for the next CAO would be, what you envision being. We'll do that first. Then we'll look at the job description and hopefully you guys have had a chance to come with prepared items of what you think should be in there, what, where the priorities lie. Um, how does that sound that way? We can have a discussion and see where it goes, okay? So I thought we would just start with um, Councillor Colburn, you're first on my list here. So do you want to bring forward priorities that you see in a CAO? I'm just uh, so I, when I read the materials, I was trying to wrap my head around. Um, and sometimes I know I need to start at the end and work my way back. So. What's what are we hoping to do? At the end of the night, you were hoping to figure out what you are looking for for your CAO. You had mentioned back a couple of meetings ago that you need to put together your priorities, what you each see for that person to lead the municipality, what you are building what you see you want to come in. So we're we're making a list of our priorities for the next year. So that we can share that. So I so what I got what I got confused with was the difference between our priorities and our qualities, because I think for our qualities, I mean, I read our I think our job description lays out the qualities fairly well or reasonably well. Um, but I think what you're saying is priorities. So what are our focus? OK. Um, yeah, what do you see from this recruitment process? What do you want to happen? What do you hope to gain at the end of it all? So I thought it was good, then I got confused. So are we going to? So my priorities may be different than Councillor Colburn's priorities. But our candidate shouldn't be advantaged or disadvantaged by that, should? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, if I could just start, one of the things that I have thought about, and some of the information that um, was sent out to everybody was just um, items that I found online that I felt gave us some information. One of the areas where I think we are lacking as council, and it goes back to council orientation at the beginning of a term. What do we as council need to know? What do we need to have happen? What are our expectations? And is that something we should put a priority on? Because if we know all of that, and I'll go to things like delegation of authority and the reporting that should come out of that quarterly, and other areas that we should be expecting um, reporting to us. The insurance delegation we had this evening, where there's actually annual insurance reporting that should be come to, coming to us. If we don't have that clarified and clear in our own minds as to what we as council need and should expect, how do we give the direction to a CAO? Do we get a little muddled when we don't know what we should be asking them for? So then if they don't give that to us, we don't even know that we missed out on some of our responsibilities. And I'm wondering if we have a twofold thing we need to do here. One is to create that orientation policy manual 
instruction manual for council as we're going through the CAO recruitment so that we're sure we're putting into a job description for the CAO what we really need from them. So I'll open it up and maybe see if anybody, what anybody else's thoughts are. Um, Madam Clerk. Uh, through you, Mayor Carlton, unofficially, I have been working on a council manual, but I'm happy to take that direction away. If there's anything that you would like to see included in there, um, it will be main policies, um, you know, everything you need to know as a counselor. Uh, so I've been working on that as a side of the desk kind of thing, but hopefully I'll be turning that around sooner rather than later if that's helpful to council. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. So. <clears throat> the document that I liked the best was the CAO priorities and job description. It was actually written by Alberta and it kind of left mm -hmm. like I thought that looked like a pretty good sort of recipe for how do we get from here to there. I don't know what other people thought, but that was my. Other comments? Deputy Mayor Pringle, go ahead. Yeah, I was just reading the one description that's here too and but then I guess where I think we've had troubles before is trying to find that person that's going to bind the team together I think we've looked at where they came from and what they've done in other parts of the province as being something that fit into our goal here and I think we've realized now that what our Fit here is totally different than what we've seen what we've had in the last couple of years so at the end of the day when we hire a CAO the top priority or the top piece of ability that I really want to see this guy have is able to bind people together and get this to work as a team here um, we don't want to go down that road where we just came from there where we had all the separation um, obviously we're going to be looking for the qualifications that we all carry um, to do the job but for me, it's going to have to be somebody that's going to be that personable, that's going to be able to pull people together and get us going a direction instead of seven directions. I, I'm going to confess that I'm still a little confused as to what we're doing right now and what the goal is. Um, so are we are we still on track with Crystal's suggestion to? talk about what our priorities are or what what we would like to see and have her cross reference that with the existing document to make sure that we're on track or if there needs to be changes made. A follow up Councillor Colburn's comment with the question is what the ultimate goal here is tonight to look at our current job description and see if it meet their needs and not reinvent a wheel because we have one uh, and in there it has uh, I just had it provide inspiration and model the behavior of striving to be the best to staff maximize the talents of subordinates by ensuring adequate training mentoring and coaching determine appropriate performance indicators acknowledge and recognize good performance and deal with poor performance issues fairly and promptly which speaks to what counselor or to what um, Grant was talking about just a few minutes ago, I think. Um, so I, I agree with Councillor Day. I we we have been talking for five years now almost about a leader that will, you know, be a great cheerleader and bind us together. And I I understand that that's important, but in following Councillor Day's um, comments, I I'm looking for someone who holds our staff accountable for results and performance. Um, I think we need someone who's going to establish high standards and who can stress the importance of meeting those standards. Um, so I, I hope that doesn't sound harsh, but I, I think we need more than a cheerleader. I think we need a leader who holds staff to account and isn't afraid to make the tough decisions at the end of the day. So I don't want to overthink this, but then would you say 
that you're looking for someone to provide inspiration and model behavior of striving to be the best of staff to maximize the talents of subordinates by ensuring adequate training, acknowledging good performance and deal with poor performance fairly and promptly? Yes, I just don't know that that is something so, that we have followed through with. True. So is, is the question not that we need to define it, we just need to follow it? Yeah, like I, so that's what I'm I'm wondering about. I, I'm also, I'll still throw this out there. I'm definitely punchy because we're at, you know, at this hour, but I don't know that we need to define much more. I wonder if we just need to be really firm on our seeking that talent and and i'm to be honest i don't know i i would throw my hands up a bit because i think so the last four times that we've gone through this we've employed firms that only hire public sector leaders like or really struggle where i think i struggle with the job description we have now is we have some I would call them almost high level visions or ideas of what we want, but how do you actually know that the person you're hiring will do any of those things? I think that's the trick is our interview process. And the questions we ask or what the information, the, the, the test that we put people through to determine if, if they've got what we need. I don't know how to do that, though. No, I don't either. Councillor Coburn? And then hey, Councillor and I think we've all experienced us asking the right questions, and inevitably um, we get the right answer. But that doesn't always translate into behavior um, or values that you see day to day. So I know it's a little um, after the fact, but that's why we need to adhere to our performance evaluation plan. I think there maybe could, could be some tweaks in our um, contract that we that we ask for that that don't put us in a position of liability so much as we've seen in the past. Um, but as far as getting the right answers at interview time, you're going to get the right answers because that's people are are savvy and they know what to say, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to follow through. Um, that's the challenge, right? So I don't disagree. But when we hired our third last, fourth last, it was really important to me that we talked about that. I thought we talked about we have a lot of young staff that need mentoring. And when we talked ahead of time, I said, I think it's really critical that we have someone who can coach staff, who can coach performance. And when we asked that question, I asked it as a supplementary question. He said, oh, yeah, like all that stuff. I used to coach my kids teams all the time. And I said, right. So that's that's nice. I'm talking about coaching, so coaching coaching employees. And he said, oh, yeah, no, I, I do all the community stuff. So I, I don't know. I don't disagree with you, but I think sometimes that, to me, that was a, yeah, this guy doesn't know. I'm talking about coaching and mentoring. He's talking about, I taught T, I coach T-ball. And so, you know, it's easy to say 2020 and look back, but I'd say one of our concerns coming out of that employment were, I don't know that he, did the hard things with the employees that needed the performance management. So, so maybe we maybe it's different questions. Uh, I just need to cautious you to be very careful and please just be cautious on how you refer to things. Thank you. So, Rick. Okay. I I wanted to put some support behind Councillor Coburn's comment about the performance review because anyone who has 10 years municipal leadership experience is probably going to be able to answer job interview questions well. And where we see whether or not they're doing their job well is in the day-to-day -day performance. And if we're not if, if we're not following our procedures for performance reviews, then that's, I believe, when 
in my minimal experience, that's when things could get out of hand. So I, I feel like it's a bigger process than just the job description and the interviews, but the performance evaluations are very important. Thank you, Mayor Carlton. And and I so when I when I go back to the question Councillor Thompson is asking, like how do we like how do we know we're getting what they say we're getting? The the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And I wonder why we can't get more information. I know there are legalities and it can become litigious, but are there any better ways to get have conversa conversations with previous employers so that we can get their take on where the strengths um, of that individual are. Unfortunately, that's in regard to a process, not kind of what we're discussing. So we have to kind of refocus that way. That would be more like an exit interview and refocus our tools that way. Or I think you're mis misunderstanding. I'm talking about contacting the candidate's previous place of employment to get that feedback. That, so it's not an exit interview that we're conducting. It's just doing our due diligence as, in checking uh, resources and references. Sorry, my apologies. It would be the references they they would provide to us that we would reach out. We can also, there is that option to reach out to a third party to do reference checks. There are companies that do that. However, we do reference checks and we have our standard questions, and that can be something that we work on to prepare reference checks for that potential candidate. That's that's in your scope. Thank you. Um, conversation the mayor and I had a while ago was, and I think as a whole, and not individual councils, but. Georgian Bluffs councils as a whole have failed that we haven't done the performance evaluations. We haven't had the dialogue. We haven't set the tone. We haven't set the standards with the CAOs. Um, the question I think is here tonight is our job description. I think our job description is fine. Um, I think we as a council need to be held accountable and, and set our goals and, and be very proactive with, with a future CAO about what we expect, what our performances are. And I don't think that's a yearly performance appraisal. I think that could be a quarterly as it's moving forward. I think where our biggest struggle is, is is our interview process and how we do that. And I mean, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about that over the weekend. You read this and you read it and you go by. But we've got to come out with that process in which we all as a group of seven feel that we we found the best candidate who's engaged in the community, who's part of the community, who wants to work, who wants to mentor. That's what we we're, we need and that's what we, we struggle for. I think that's a different conversation. But I mean, I, I watch every sporting event that I go to. Somebody's recording that and then they're replaying it and rewatching it. and. You know, are, is that an interview process and in, in presentations? Is that report writing in front of a group of constituents? Is that a you know, go back and replay and, and watch? That's a different process. But I guess the question tonight is the job description. And I think our job description is decent. I think historically we, we as council have failed. And then that's where part of our problem lies. And, and one is council needs to understand their roles and responsibilities and where their limits are and where we would start to meander outside those limits. I would say limits and what our expectations should be so that we don't land up not getting the reports coming to us that we should. I just it's interesting when we're kind of getting on this appraisal because the first note I have here is a CEO should want to have regular appraisals done to ensure that they are on track with council perhaps quarterly the first year with twice annually in the second and succeeding years with one in June, which is performance based and year end is goal based. And I think we should put some of the onus for that on the CAO along with HR and council, because if the CAO is deflecting some of that around an appraisal being done, that should be a red flag for us very early in the um, process and should tell us that this is someone who doesn't want an appraisal done for various reasons. So if that were written into the job description somehow so that we are sure of getting that done and that it's reflective of their performance, if they're not pushing to have that done, as I say, quarterly the first year, um, twice annually after that. And the only other comment that I have here is that I would like to add is 
And maybe this can be used in the interview somehow, but they need to have a willingness to listen to other points of view from council members and residents and not take it personally, but be willing to be open and listen to what everybody's saying. And that comment happened here earlier that we're now in a position where we are asking the questions and having the conversations and nobody takes offense if somebody has a differing point of view. And I think we want to see that dynamic carry forward as well. Deputy Mayor Pringle, go ahead. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that too there. Yeah, and the job description, I'm in agreement. Um, there's only so many ways you have to write the job description. Job description is going to be the same pretty much everywhere. I think where the difference may be this time for us is it's us doing the, the legwork. We had the legwork done for us before by you know, outside carrier parties, and we took what they told us as being, this is your best options. We are going to make that decision now whether that's our best option or not, and I'm hoping that that'll give us a little bit more insight into the people that we're looking at or, or talking to. And you know, again, at the end of the day, for me, if the CAO that we hire has to respect the township, half of his duties has got to be nothing because of people will respect the man and do what they ask. So um, that's my own personal opinion. That's the way I see in our operation that we, you know, if you get, if you have the respect of the people working for you, they'll do this work for you, right? They're not going to fight you all the time. So I think the perspective with us doing the hiring this time and seeing the whole piece of it probably will change a lot of life on our end of it. Their comments? Are there any other changes to the job description that you would like? Because that will be what I bring back to you for final approval. Sure, go ahead. Um, forgive me if it's already in there, Crystal, um, because I, I, it's been a few days since I've, I've read all of this. Um, being a CAO of a large city is very different than being a CAO of, of a small township. And so I, this is just my perspective, um, I believe we need someone who is willing to get their hands dirty, roll up their sleeves and dig in um, and not believe that their job is to sit in their office and simply orchestrate at a high level. I, I really do believe we, we need a leader who is more hands, as hands-on as, as possible. Councillor Day, go ahead. Would establish and maintain positive relationships with community partners, neighboring municipalities and organizations, the media and other levels of government fit that criteria for you? Not exactly. I don't think, I don't know if there's a better way of saying it. So let me ask if, if I'm on the right track. I think you're, you're talking about understanding the nuanced difference between an urban municipality, the governance of an urban municipality and the governance of a rural municipality. It is definitely a little different. Like the expectations are the municipal representation in a rural municipality is different than what you would expect in an urban municipality. And I'm not really sure how the words are, but I wonder if there's an opportunity in the um, working conditions, like demands and working conditions, if it's if it fits there. I like it there because it would it would jump out. But, you know, somewhere between. Paragraph two and three, or maybe in the first one, you say work is typically performed in a standard office setting or in a rural municipality. I, I don't know the right words, but I think what you're looking for is it's the role of a municipal councillor in a rural municipality is different than the role of a municipal councillor in an urban setting. And, and I, I think the candidate has to understand that the working conditions in a in this municipality would be different than if you were the CAO in Brantford or Niagara Falls or Portland. And I think that stuff will come out when you see the resumes, right? Like we'll be able to, we'll know where they're coming from. So we'll have a bit of a heads up to as to where they're coming from. I would just like to see it written in the, in the, what's the document, the job description and the posting is where that we will really convey that message.
I wanted to echo uh, Councillor Thompson's idea that in the demands and working conditions would be a place where that idea would stand out. If it's embedded in one of the other sections in the document, there's a lot of text, so it would be easy to be buried in there. But if the demands uh, included visiting different parts of the municipality or connecting directly with constituents, I don't know if that meets uh, Councillor Coburn and Thompson's goals, but that location seems like a good, good place for the information. Any other thoughts on that? Do we want something added in there? Because I would tend to agree. Work is typically performed in a standard office setting and requires extensive computer work, concentration, and sitting. Doesn't really fit what we're maybe asking. There's that aspect of it, but there's definitely something else where um, getting out there and visiting the facilities, getting out and seeing the roads and seeing what's actually happening, meeting people outside of here is more fitting. So how do we want to restructure that area? ideas and suggestions forward in the document next time and then you can take a look and give you options of wording unless you have a way you would like it to set it right now okay any further changes or comments there so we really have moved straight to CAO job description and bypass CAO priorities. I think that's where Crystal was trying to start us, was priorities. However, I think in your conversation, I got your priorities out, is what I needed you to have the conversation of what you all are looking for, and that's what I have now. And then I can bring that back if you ever are kind of going off track, is what did, what did we discuss? What were we looking for at the beginning? Well, this, we have it now. You had that conversation. Okay, then I would like to circle back to what I originally said about an orientation package for council that our clerk has indicated she's working on. Do we want to leave that as only the clerk working on that off the side of her desk, or do we want to actually have two or three of us get together with her? and draw on, there's lots of information on the internet as to what other municipalities have done and take a look at what we want to include in there. Is anybody here willing to take that on and help? Councillor Coburn, go ahead. I am I was just gonna say, I'm quite happy to leave that with our acting clerk. Um, the, the templates are already there um, online. There, there are a million different ways of, of doing it that other municipalities have done. Um, we just need to take the shell and plunk in our appropriate documents. I, I don't know that you need, unless you feel you need assistance. Through you, Mayor Carlton, I have a pretty good start on it. Um, so it will be electronic and it will be updated for you as policies are updated. So it will be a part of my regular council follow-up. Um, so it will more than likely be in a SharePoint format and it will be a document library where the things will be available to you and everything will be labeled uh, appropriately. I did mention earlier in the meeting, if there are any documents you feel should be included in it, I'm open to all those suggestions. So if you're having a think about, you know, documents that you access regularly, please let me know um, via email is fine and I can ensure that they're included in there. I would like to see all policies and procedures and that type of thing there so that instead of trying to search through our website to find them, they would be in one spot where we could locate them easily. <laughs> Any comments from anyone else on that? One thing that we do have to finalize is the interview dates. We have to confirm that we had talked at our last meeting that we were going to do that um, coming up, because if I were to bring the job posting back to you at our next special council meeting, I would like the interview date specifically in that job posting so that um, they, the candidate is aware that when they will be taking place. Are you able to make that decision now? I believe we'll need to see the dates again, which are in the previous agenda, because there was one where there was a decision to be made. 
So the two options, the first option is interviews on September 18th. Uh, can you tell us the day of the week? Sorry. Monday, September 18th. And the time of day? From It would be all afternoon. So it would be 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. Allowing an hour and a half per interview with a half an hour break in between. Approximately ending at hopefully 7, 7.30. I can do one and three that day. Okay. The other option with the other time with that is Friday, September 22nd at 10 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. So that is option A. Are we looking at having a team or are we looking at everybody doing this? You would have to have everyone be doing this as council. Yeah. We're setting it with everyone. So we've got one, two, three half days. There, There is an option B, uh, which I think I would Appreciate hearing you again. So, four. Oh. Option B is set out as Monday, September 25th at 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 5 o'clock, and Wednesday, September 27th at 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. So in the schedule that was prepared, there is no council meeting on the 27th in the evening. There is a council meeting September 20th, which is Wednesday, that is Committee of the Whole. That is why there is no interviews booked for that day. It's the Grace Hobble Conservation Authority meeting that's always on the last Wednesday of the month. Sorry, my apologies. Mm -hmm. So saying that B will be out then, right? The 25th, 27th, you guys have to install it? We can always mix wherever you like. These are just suggested dates. I don't want to do anything on a Friday, sorry. <laughs> Summer's for the Friday for me. I'm, I've got nobody at work except me. But I do like the 25th and 27th, but... I don't know the procedure for missing the Grace Hobble Conservation Authority meeting to have both great George and Bluff's representatives not there and mayor, the mayor is the chair of the <laughs> This isn't starting till three. Will your meeting be over by then? Isn't doesn't it have a one o'clock start? Grace Hobble, one fifteen, usually to four thirty. One evening where we we left the meeting early because it, it wasn't over before five. Mm. Would the following day, the Thursday, or is that county council? Five and seven thirty. On the twenty seventh. It is humanly possible. <laughs> it is a very long day to teach in the morning, go to the Grace Elbow Conservation Authority meeting, and then the job interviews in the evening for me. That might become a possibility, though. What if we back up from Wednesday, go Monday and Tuesday? I have conservation material <laughs> on the Monday. <laughs> Tuesday's good. I have a conflict on the Monday and the Wednesday. So if we could do Tuesday and then Thursday, we'd be running later after county council. 
but we could get out of county council by three. So, Mayor Carlton, we may have a Chamber of Commerce event on the 28th, just as a, that's to be confirmed, but I have that blocked off. So we just need to keep that in mind. May I propose two Tuesdays? Is there a problem having the interviews a week apart from each other? There's Committee of Adjustment booked on uh, the Tuesday prior to the 26th, so September 19th. Did anyone have a conflict with Monday, September 18th and Tuesday, September 26th? Monday the 18th, I could do one and three. And Tuesday the 26th, I'm okay. Good. Okay. Our dates will be Monday, September 18th at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Our next date will be Tuesday, September 26th from 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Those dates will be listed in the job posting so the candidate is aware. I've also included that the second round of interviews be scheduled for October 16th, which is a Monday. And that there, at that time, hopefully we have it down to three candidates. So there's three times. Does Monday, October 16th work? Oh, I see heads nodding. You put these dates out far enough, they're not booked yet. Okay. <laughs> Monday, October 16th, we are confirming our second round of interviews for three times at 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. Thank you. For you, Mayor Carlton, I will cancel the existing invites and amend them to reflect today's discussion. Thank you. Do we have anything further there then? I'm just looking ahead to our next meeting, which I'm going to bring back a draft, or another job description for you for final approval, the job posting for approval. If you do need to make changes for it, that's fine. We can make them and then I'll bring it to you on the following Wednesday. If you are fine with everything that day, it will be approved and I will post the following day. I'm seeing heads nodding all the way around here. Okay, so we are good. I can go to the confirming bylaw on this one. Okay. So that bylaw number 2023-041 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council on June 21st, 2023, be read a first, second, and third time, finally passed, signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and engrossed in the bylaw book. But I have a mover and a seconder, please. Deputy Mayor Pringle, Councillor Thompson, is there any discussion? I will call the vote. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Committee of the Whole will meet as regularly scheduled on July 5th at 5 p.m. If there's no further business, I will now call for adjournment of this meeting. Could I have a mover and a seconder? Councillor Coburn, Councillor Day, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Haley still needs videos for Canada Day. <laughs> 